Bouchard en Diablé was uh, founded in 1997 by a small group of avid fly anglers here in Mont Tremblant. There were uh, different aspects to the project. Uh, the first uh, aspect was to improve access for fishing along the uh, Diable River. The second aspect was to improve the quality of the fishing through stocking and through improvement of the uh, bioaquatic environment. For myself, as the president of Les Mouchards en Diable and for our members, we find ourselves in a unique situation of being able to uh, participate in conservation efforts and have the exceptional opportunity of being very close to our environment. As a result of the efforts of the Mouchard en Diable, throughout the years we've seen an improvement in the quality of the fishing along the Diable River. Uh, in the beginning, uh, we experimented with a number of different uh, techniques, stocking habitat improvements. Over time, we developed certain actions that uh, helped us to create a sustainable uh, sport fishery. Along with this, was a, the establishment of a new regulation that created a fly fishing only section along five kilometers of the Diab River. This was a unique project along public waters. The fly fishing only sector of the Diab River is exceptional, exclusively reserved for fly fishing, but it is free access. This is unique in Quebec. It is something that does not exist anywhere else in the province. I find it really amazing to have a place on this river where we can actually discover fishing, learn how to fish, become better fishermen, and also being completely free and accessible for all. Thanks to the great uh, contributions of our membership and financial support, from the Ministry of Natural Resources and Wildlife, we've managed to create an exceptional fly fishing venue. Brown trout have been stocked in the river since uh, 1954. So finding brown trout uh, on the, in the Riviere du Diable is uh, quite common. At the very beginning, this was a big question that we had was whether the investment that we were putting into stocking the river would bear fruit. Whether this was an investment that we can envisage over the long term. The stocking of the river uh, poses a number of challenges, uh, not the least of which is uh, filling up uh, knapsacks uh, with plastic bags full of water, fish and oxygen this is not an easy task to carry all these fish on bags and to the river in order to release them. We really feel that there is a very precious load and that we really have a duty to make sure that these fish are released in very good condition. Where we find ourselves having to uh, trek through the woods, uh, along trails, up and over hills, uh, to finally arrive at the river where we can introduce the fish into their new homes. We are very fortunate to have uh, such great volunteers who uh, come out and help us with uh, such an arduous task. At the moment where we open the bags and let uh, the water of the river uh, temper the water that's in the bags, and just at that moment where we're letting the fish into their new habitat. That is the point of huge satisfaction to anybody who's involved in such an endeavor. According to the information that we received from some biologists, would lead us to think that there is some natural reproduction occurring in the Diable River by the trout that have been stocked by the Mouchard en Diable over the course of many years. One of the most important conservation efforts uh, that are practiced by the members of the uh, Mouchard en Diable is uh, catch and release. Uh, catch and release allows us to land a fish, uh, release that fish, possibly hook it, land it again. Uh, those fish survive through the season. Uh, they find their way to the spawning beds. It's a cycle of sustainability for future generations of fish. My first experience fly fishing, I took a lesson at the fly fishing, the local fly fishing store. 
and uh, I went to the river with an instructor. And then, when I caught my first fish, the instructor showed me how to properly release that fish. So I was very surprised because then I realized that I did not have to keep that fish. I could enjoy the fishing and release a fish uh, in good health. When fishing for trout in small streams, one of the biggest determinants of, of survival is whether or not the, uh, the angler is using a, a bait type that results in deep hooking. So, so we know that things like flies and lures tend to result in more superficial hooking where the fish is caught in the, the lip or jaw versus something like live bait where fish tend to ingest the bait more deeply and are more likely to get hooked in the throat or the gullet. So, the first time that my father watched me catch and then release a fish, to him it was like a shock. I saw in him a, a reflex of wanting to run after the fish after I'd released it and it was swimming away. It was as if I'd made a mistake. Uh, over the years, catch and release fishing uh, has become uh, more and more common uh, among fly fishermen and in fact uh, all types of fishermen are seeing the benefits of uh, the sustainability uh, achieved by catch and release. going to release a fish, one of the biggest drivers is, uh, is, is uh, air exposure duration. And uh, as you can imagine, fish are accustomed to living in water. Uh, you've just reeled them in, they've uh, expended a lot of energy during the fight, and they, their body is wanting to start to recover. And instead, if you take that fish out of water and hold it in air, it actually adds an additional stressor and makes it very difficult for that fish to start the recovery process. So as an angler, even if the fish looks in really good shape when you release it, you need to be thinking about what you can do to make sure that you know, it leaves uh, and has uh, uh, as much slime and as fins intact and uh, the fish uh, facing upstream. So the water's coming down and the fish's nose and mouth are pointed into that flow and the fish will just sit there and that fresh water will, will, uh, will rush over the gills and quickly uh, uh, deliver oxygen to the fish and the fish will take off quite quickly. In order to properly practice catch and release, one should use barbless hooks, nets that are designed for catch and release. Be sure to land the fish as quickly as possible so as not to exhaust it. Leave the fish in the water as much as possible. Take your souvenir photos as quickly as possible. Touch the fish as little as possible Always wet your hands before touching the fish and never touch the fish on the gills. In order not to damage the fish internally, never squeeze the fish. Do not release the fish until you are sure it is revived. We wish to promote fishing in a very responsible way, in a way that allows us to help maintain the resource for future generations.